Sarah James. Hey. You just made an 11 song LP. You just finished and released I did. a full length album. We did. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. I, I was there for a yeah, lot of Yeah, I know. That. You were yeah. there for most of it. What made you decide to call it Lucky Now? That's a really good question. Um, I, you know, I've been wanting to do a record like this for a really long time. And there's a song on the collection by Ryan Adams called Lucky Now. It, for some reason, that song just really resonates with me. The message, everything about it, it's a haunting kind of a thing. And as I was working, as we were working on this collection, I thought, I really am lucky now to get to be able to do this. And it just kind of stuck. And it clicked, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's a cool title. And when you say you're lucky now, you're just talking about being surrounded by musicians and people. That's and a really good point, like too. Like the people in your corner. Yeah, there were just a lot of people. Uh, yourself, obviously, yeah. as the producer of the, of the album. Um, through my life and a musical career, and, you know, starting from my mom, you know, i got to mention mom, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, more recently, I'm just surrounded by some amazing community of musicians and folks that yeah. inspire me and encourage me. It's a cool me. community yeah, here, for it sure. It's really yeah. cool, yeah. So, speaking of uh, all the people, the It Takes a Village thing, yeah. um, who who played on this record, you know, from the from the local scene? Like what? Well, some of my favorite people. <laughs> Aaron okay, Howard, well. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, there are a lot of people that were important to me in my development as a musician. Uh, Doug Edgel from Pittsburgh, yes. just an amazing musician in his own right and uh, contributed a lot. Tracks yeah. Paul uh, Meisenzahl, who's in my band here in, in Phoenix. Um, Paul did an absolute masterful job laying down a mm -hmm. lot of the great lead tracks. And uh, Travis Snowberger also a, a phenomenal Such a bassist yeah. here. Yeah, so he's, good. he's wonderful. But yeah. he's also in my band. And then uh, you know, lucky now is Robert Hoke doing some really wonderful uh, acoustic. I don't know what that a was called. It was a Weisenberg, Weisenberg okay. instrument. But yeah, I didn't know what the instrument was, but it's yeah. the most beautiful sounding acoustic it's just track incredible. I've ever. It just really set that <laughs> mixed. Yeah. yeah, it just really set that track. It's really touched me. Yeah. So, so when I think about all that, that's grateful for the wonderful people there. And that's sort of kind of t tying back into the title of Lucky Now. Exactly. That, yeah. Right. The, the, the moment of hearing Robert's parts on yeah. your version of the song was exactly. really where that, right. yeah, yeah. that yeah. occurred to you. Yeah, I had the same experience with, the, with uh, Robert's parts coming in. They came in and I dropped them in and I was like, I don't think we're doing anything else yeah, with this. It was just yeah. like we got drums and bass and, yeah. and acoustic guitar and then Robert and it was that was the song. I yeah. mean, that was yeah, pretty incredible. Yeah. Right now you've recorded a full LP of covers. Mm -hmm. um, what inspired you? Like, what's the inspiration behind this record when you're mm. choosing covers? Because obviously there's unlimited covers to choose from. Mm -hmm. How did you hone in on these eleven songs? Mm. There's a lot of music that's gone kind of by the wayside, and yeah. my my goal or my uh, ambition, if you will, is to take some of those vintage classic songs that everybody knows. It's in somewhere in our brain yeah, yeah. and repurpose them, which is kind of my word, to repurpose some of this, this music and bring it back to life, uh, but not... And when to, you say repurpose, you're just talking about like a different arrangement or yeah. a, a different take mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. Like it might be the same song with the same even at a similar tempo, but you're doing something different with the instrumentation or... Yeah, yeah. like Andrew from Montgomery. I've never heard old, anybody yeah. do that in six, the big, six, eight time. That's the big thing, It's always thing. three, yeah. four, four, four. It's this, it's this yeah. blues thing on the record. It, it really, really cool. is. Yeah. And so that's one example. Another example would be, um, let's see, there's 11 of them. What would be another great example of that? Oh, Love Potion number nine. Yeah. Okay, 1959. You know, the Clovers released that, and, and it's just something that's that stuck with me. And so I've kind of molded it into kind of a blues genre, if you will, yeah. and it works. The other thing, you know, to say about these songs, Aaron, is that they all still work. So a friend oh, of mine totally. has said, a great song will always be a great song. And yeah. they, they still work. Totally. And I try to stay true to the DNA so that at least they're still recognizable. Oh, of course. I mean, yeah. you're pretty much doing the original melody, mm -hmm. almost exactly of everything. Even Angel from Montgomery, it's the original melody, but there's sort of this like slow blues underpinning in mm -hmm. six eight, which mm -hmm. is which what kind of makes it different. Yeah, when I um, hear that song, that's what I hear, and it just it just came to me. It wasn't yeah. even an intentional. It was almost thing. like an accident. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Speaking of 
pulling songs from the decades, we were discussing it in one of our last sessions before we sent the right. record off. Yeah. Like we were trying to figure out when every song, I think it was maybe when we were going through the publishing or something, like we, we had to figure out the publishing right. to send to the right. people for the right. cover licensing. And we discovered, hey, there's, a, there's songs from, uh, you know, the 50s all the way to 2012. Yeah. And I think there's might be like one decade missing somewhere. I don't remember yeah, which one it was. Maybe the 90s. I don't the, know. Yeah. yeah there, so there's a decade yeah. missing. <laughs> but basically, you, you we'll know, you're it. talking about t bringing back old songs, but it's like, well... I don't know if we can call 2012 bringing back old songs. Like, how how did you? Was that intentional? Were you like trying to grab songs from every era for this? No, or? it was it was completely an accident, as you said. Like, we were either mastering or going through the copyright uh, paperwork and so forth. I it kind of dawned me, wow, man, there's one from every decade, from the 50s on up to now. It was like that wasn't intentional. It just yeah. kind of happened. But what I think it is it's a reflection of my passion for music that resonates with a yeah. broad demographic, a lot of people. And, you know, one of the things that really um, touches my heart in live performance is after doing a song and somebody comes up, sometimes with yes. a tear in their yeah. eye and said, oh, I haven't heard that song since, you know, you name it. And thank you, nobody plays that. They have some specific memory yeah. associated with something college. with their, right. their partner or their college, right. totally. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good feeling. That's really cool. So... I know the answer to this because <laughs> I was there, um, but it must have taken a lot of time and effort to kind of prepare these songs and um, put together the arrangements and turn mm. them into a yeah yeah uh, record. Yeah, it was a long time. It was this, I, I had no idea, <laughs> and you worked on it all summer for the most part, putting a lot of things together. But I think with um, I'm kind of new to this this process and. Uh, it's just un unbelievable how much effort it takes and, and time, yeah. painstaking time, sitting with you, going over <laughs> some of these things. Do you like this? Do you like that? Should we do it? So we basically co-produced it yeah. to a large extent, but you put the, the magic finishing touches here and there and embellishments. So yeah. it, was, it was fun. I learned a lot. It is fun going, going it, through that. It's fun and then it gets tedious and then it gets fun yeah. again. There's these, <laughs> yeah. there's these moments where it's like, you know, Especially, you're trying to figure out why that snare sounds a tiny bit so late. Like, and... Yeah, right. Now, the fun part is when you finally get wake up the net, you know, when it releases, it's here. It's, 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 it's a thing now. It's streaming. It's a thing. It's, it's... Weirdly, it's one of my favorite parts of producing a record is when I've sent it off and I can't do anything else. Right. Because at, in that end, you get on your microscope glasses and you're like, that feels wrong. Yeah. It's, and it's something it's that no one will ever know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't pick the final version out of a lineup from the other 10 final right. versions. Yeah. <laughs> you played a release party and the yeah. album's been out for a little bit. How do you think people are taking it? What's the feedback? How's it being received? Well, my family really likes it. Yes! <laughs> when? No, I think the people have, who have heard it are just like, wow. This is really mo motivating stuff. This is yeah. really fun. I can tell you had a lot of fun doing this music, um, yeah. this project. And um, I just look forward to more uh, people get, getting excited about maybe rediscovering some of these old songs. Yeah. And, and I tell you what, Aaron, what, what strikes me sometimes even in a concert you know, setting is like, I don't want to sound like you know, an old fogey, but... When younger generations come to me and say, man, I really like that great, song. Yeah. What is that? And it's like, <laughs> totally. all right, tell me that that, that says that this material still really works. Uh, and I'm not sure. afraid to embrace Well, and there's stuff. songs that I think are great. Like, yeah. Poor Pitiful Me, it was yeah. funny, because I remember I was mixing that one on the monitors, and my buddy comes into the room, and he's like, this song is so catchy, I can't get it out of my head, and I keep singing it like in my sleep. And <laughs> Me neither. I, what, who is this? Yeah. And I'm like, it was actually Warren Zevon, and uh, yeah, there were a couple covers of it throughout the years, but it really kind of has disappeared from modern awareness, mostly. Like mm -hmm. you don't hear that song out and about, like yeah. Sweet Caroline, or you know, right, or yeah, right, the Beatles kind of biggies. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah. Yeah, that's that's cool. So you, the answer is kind of you don't know exactly how it's being received yet because it has enough time hasn't passed. But from the people who have told you, yeah, the feedback's oh, been positive. Oh, yeah, the feedback has been yeah. has been very very good. And um, you know, I wouldn't say necessarily that I'm on a mission. But in some regard, yeah, I am. Like some of these songs are treasures, yep. and and I, it's like uh, Little Red Riding Hood. Okay, Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs, right? Yeah. And I always play when I in a, in a concert setting. Say, hey, okay, who remembers who did that? And somebody goes, Sam the Sham. It's just like, like one person, one person one way person in the back knows. of the yeah, place totally. Somewhere. And totally. so it's it's fun to, to kind of resurrect these mm -hmm. these things and breathe new life into them. Absolutely. You know? So that's, that's cool. one of the intents of this collection. Yeah. Awesome. Sarah James, it was a pleasure talking to you about this record. Um, it was awesome working on it. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. We had a good time. It was fun, long, hard project, but we <laughs> got it done. Yeah. So where can people just talk to the viewers about where they can mm -hmm. find uh, of course. your music, this record, and hear mm -hmm. what we're talking about here? Absolutely. Well, the first place I'd like you to go to is my website, sarahjamesmusic.com. You can find everything there and also find out where I'm playing, performing in the area and elsewhere. Uh, also, all major streaming platforms like iTunes, uh, Spotify, you, you name it. But I also want to say, if you haven't heard it, go there. If you have heard it and listened to it, thank you so much. I really appreciate your attention and support. And please tell somebody about it. And uh, that would be the best thing you could do for me right now. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, Sarah. you're welcome. Wish was true. An angel took my hand, said you don't have to hurry. Go all the time in the world, don't worry. Don't you wish it was true? Hold on, you wish it was true.